ಹಲೋ ಡಿಯರ್ ಮತ್ತೊಮ್ಮೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ನಿಮಗೆ ಈ ವಿಡಿಯೋದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಒನ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಅನುಕೂಲವಾಗುವಂತೆ ಅತಿ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಕವರ್ ಆಗೋ ಹಾಗೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪಲ್ ಚಾಯ್ಸ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ನ ಅಟೆಂಪ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂದರೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ನೆನಪಿರಬೇಕು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಈಗ ಈ ವಿಡಿಯೋದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಕವರ್ ಮಾಡಿರೋದು ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಐ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ನೋ ಐ ಲರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ನೀವು ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಲೆಸನನ್ನು ಕೇಳಿರ್ತೀರಿ ಆದರೆ ಭಾಳ ದಿವಸ ಆಗಿಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ಗಳು ನೆನಪಾರು ಹೋಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಗಳನ್ನು ಓದ್ತಾ ಇವೆಲ್ಲವೂ ನೆನಪಾರು ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಹದಿನೈದು ನಿಮಿಷದೊಳಗೆ ಇಡೀ ಪಾಠದ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮೇನ್ ಮೇನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಏನಿದ್ದಾವೆ ಅವೆಲ್ಲವೂ ಬಂದು ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡ್ತವೆ ಈ ಲೆಸನ್ಲಿಂದ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪಲ್ ಚಾಯ್ಸ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ನ ಕನಿಷ್ಠ ಅಂದ್ರೂ ಎರಡು ನೂರಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಅವೆಲ್ಲವನ್ನೂ ಓದಿಕೊಂಡು ಅದರ ಉತ್ತರಗಳನ್ನು ನೀವು ತೆಗೆದು ಭಾಳನೇ ಕಷ್ಟ ಇದು ಎಕ್ಸಾಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಹತ್ತಿರ ಬಂದಾಗ ಒಂದು ಎರಡು ಅಥವಾ ಮೂರು ಬಾರಿ ಈ ವಿಡಿಯೋನ ನೀವು ನೋಡಿದರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಗಳು ನಿಮಗೆ ನೆನಪಳಿತಾವೆ ಇದಲ್ಲದೆ ಫೋರ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಮತ್ತು ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ಗೆ ನೀವು ಉತ್ತರವನ್ನು ಬರಿ ಬರಿಬೇಕಾದಾಗ ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ಗಳು ನೆನಪಿದ್ರೆ ತುಂಬ ಸುಲಭ ಆಗಿಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಇದೊಂದು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಥರ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಈಗ ನೀವು ಇದನ್ನು ನೋಡಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಇದು ತುಂಬ ಉಪಯುಕ್ತ ಅಂತ ನಿಮಗೆ ಅನಿಸಿದರೆ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನನಗೆ ತಿಳಿಸಿ ಅದರಿಂದ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಒಂದು ನನಗೂ ಒಂದು ಭರವಸೆ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಓಕೆ ಇದು ವರ್ಕೌಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತಪ್ಪ ಇದು ಒಳ್ಳೆಯದಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಇನ್ನೂ ಇದೇ ಥರ ಬೇರೆ ಲೆಸನ್ಸ್ನ ತಗೊಂಡು ಅದರಲ್ಲಿಯ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸನ್ನು ತಗೊಂಡು ವೀಡಿಯೋಗಳನ್ನು ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ನನಗೆ ಸುಲಭ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಮತ್ತು ನನ್ನ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಚಾನಲ್ ಇದೆ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ದಯಮಾಡಿ ಅದನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ನೌ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಂದನಾ ಶಿವ ವಂದನಾ ಶಿವಾಸ್ ಫಾದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಸರ್ವೇಟರ್ ಮದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ ಶಿ ವಾಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ಗಡ್ವಾಲ್ ಹಿಮಾಲಯಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಚಿಪ್ಕೋ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಶಿ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಗರ್ಲ್ ಶಿ ಡಿಡ್ ಹರ್ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಇನ್ ಕೆನಡಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹರ್ ಮಿಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಡಿಂಗ್ ಬಯೋಡೈವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಮೋನೋ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಬುಕ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಂದನಾ ಶಿವ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಚಿಪ್ಕೋ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಚಿಪ್ಕೋ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಗಡ್ವಾಲ್ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹಿಮಾಲಯಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸುಂದರ್ ಉಲ್ಲಾಲ್ ಬಹುಗುಣ ವಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಪಯನಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫಾದರ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಿಪ್ಕೋ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚಿಪ್ಕೋ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ವೇರ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಅಫೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ಸ್ಕೇಲ್ ಡಿಫಾರೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ದ ವಿಮೆನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ವೇರ್ ಹಗ್ಗಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ದೆಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಲಾಗರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ಹೆಲ್ಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಲೈಟೆಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಟರ್ನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ ಡೇ ಲೈಟ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಮಾಕ್ ದಿ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಫಿಷಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ಶೋ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದೇ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ದ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ವುಮೆನ್ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಶೋ ದೆಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಯಲ್ ಪಾಫ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಿ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಫಿಷಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಟೀಚ್ ಯು ಪ್ರೊ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದೇ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಸೇ ದೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅ ಬಚ್ನಿ ದೇವೀಸ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ವುಮೆನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ 
shift from monoculture to biodiversity method of farming and it has two courses in it that is a to z of organic farming and the second one gandhi and globalization and most of the participants are farmers and some students here are the points for rights of the nature that means the nature is given its rights these are the two tiny countries who have given the rights to the nature in their constitution that is ecuador and bolivia very important one and then when in 2011 there was a un assembly and uh, during that time there was a conference on the nature that was called harmony with the nature and there in that conference one of the agenda was dominations so when they discussed about domination these three dominations were discussed that is rich over poor men over women and human beings over nature and they came to a conclusion that we have to do away with these dominations and we have to adopt partnership that means equal men and women are equal rich and poor are equal and human beings are part of the nature they are not superior and uh, there is a word apartheid this apartheid means separateness that is the racial discrimination on the basis of color of course it it is not practiced now but cormac cullinan says or he has coined another apartheid that is eco apartheid so this eco apartheid means feeling of human beings that they are not part of the nature this illusion of thinking that we are not part of the nature is termed as eco apartheid here are the points for dead earth world view so this means before the industrial revolution in europe the people used to think that the earth is our mother she is our nurturing mother when people started thinking that it is not a mother earth it is not something vibrant it is only a dead matter which sup supplies us with all the minerals they are not part of the nature they are separate that is called a dead earth world view and uh, this leads to capitalism and here francis bacon was of this view Francis Bacon who was the father of modern science he had created the domination image he used to say that by virtue of the scientific knowledge and the technological knowledge what we have we can dominate the nature that's what he told that means we are able to control the nature and just opposite was carolin merchant that he said no we are part of the nature and earth is our mother a vibrant entity that's what carolin merchant says that's the reason one of the quotings it is given there one does not slay a mother and dig into her entrails for gold that's what is given there so he is just opposite of francis bacon but according to this view it became only a supplier of raw materials and the monoculture replaced biodiversity that means biodiversity was already there before the industrial revolution and because of this dead earth world view monoculture was introduced and now also uh, vandana shiva is trying hard to change monoculture to biodiversity method of farming that is organic farming that has become the sole mission of her life now the point about earth university earth university is located in naudanya farm which is located again in the doon valley in gadwal himalayas and it is inspired by shantiniketan it is an open school and there people learn many things about the farming the earth university teaches earth democracy
The courses conducted here are A to Z of Organic Farming and Gandhi and Globalization. This is about Earth University. Now, Earth Democracy. What is Earth Democracy? Shift from anthropocentrism to ecocentrism. Anthropocentrism means we give maximum importance to the human beings. Human interest is kept at the center and all other things are secondary. To ecocentrism. Ecocentrism means ecology, ecosystem is now made the central point and rest all are secondary. That is called ecocentrism. That means when you talk about earth democracy, this has to happen. It has shift from anthropocentrism to ecocentrism. Then freedom of all species to live and evolve in the web of life. That means everybody is equal here. All the species, animals, birds, insects, everybody has a right to live on this earth because they have taken birth. And it translates into human rights for food and water. So, earth democracy means everybody, poorest of the poor, must get food and water without any problem. If earth democracy exists, then no human being should suffer from hunger. That is the idea. Now, about Tagore. Tagore is the India's national poet and he founded Shantiniketan near Calcutta and he is a Nobel laureate and he wrote an essay called Tapo One. This essay is on nature and Indian civilization. Now, there he writes what forest teaches. First is it teaches enoughness. Then democracy, how to live without conflict and it also teaches union and compassion. In the essay Tapo 1, Tagore has also given these points. Indian civilization is forest civilization. That means most of India lives in its villages. Because of that, we are very close to the nature. That is the reason he says great ideas have come from the nature. That means all our great books, great ideas, ancient wisdom, it has all come from the people, those who lived in the forests, not in the cities. Peace of the forest has developed intellectual evolution. When we go through the ancient Indian history, we come to know that most of our rishis and munis, that is saints, they used to live as hermits in ashramas away from the cities or away from the people. There they got great ideas. That is why it is told the peace of the forest developed intellectual evolution of uh, Indians. And what is the principle of Indian civilization? The principle of Indian civilization is unity in diversity. Now also we follow this principle and for a good living or for good life, we need unity in diversity always because this is what is taught by the nature. So, if you change it, that means that is we need unity without diversity. That means when there is only unity and there is no diversity, then it leads to ground for external control. Somebody will control you. Then if there is only diversity, then it leads to conflict and conquest. That means people will fight among themselves and there will be conquest. That means a strong man will conquer the weak man. This is what happens. That is why our civilization goes on the principle of unity in diversity. And further it says, consumerism brings inequality. Consumerism bring, brings sorrow. Therefore, if you want to really enjoy the life, you have to leave consumerism and accumulation. The real enjoyment comes when you share your things with others, not by accumulation. So, I think 
now almost all points are covered here which could be asked for one mark question and even for writing your answers also this method will definitely help you specially before the examination